Hello, um, welcome to our next presentation uh, by Dinara and um, Agayeva about uh, history and development of the Russian uh, animal rights movement. And uh, Dinara is actually a member of uh, VITA, a Russian organization um, that uh, campaigns against um, factory farming and, um, and fur production, but as well, um, what, what amazed me is they uh, successfully stopped plans to uh, organize bullfights in Russia. So um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Raz, raz. Uh, hello, dear friends and colleagues. Uh, my name is Dinara. Uh, excuse me <laughs> to, for having to read from the paper, but I don't speak so good in English. But, uh, I would like to tell you about animal rights movement in my country, since I think that most of you don't know uh, much about what's going on in Russia. Uh, it's hard to tell everything, but I will try my best to give major facts. Uh, I represent Vita Animal Rights Center in Russia. Our activists cover five major industries of animal exploitations. Ex explo <laughs> My friend Dima tried to help me in English. Uh, such as food industry, research, clothes, and entitlement. Mm -hmm. Today we have branch in uh, eight major cities in Russia and consi considerable amount of volunteers in uh, thousands of cities around the country. Uh, Vita Animal Rights Center was founded in uh, 1994. Its foundation was, uh, was inspired by Tatiana Pavlova. Uh, who was a biologist, uh, linguist, and uh, thinker of animal rights movement in Russia. She started her activities in 1960. Uh, um, she is maybe first vegan in USSR, this nice woman. Uh, for me, she is hero because she decided to have not family, children, and all her life dedicate to animal rights. This is really a hero woman. Uh, today, VITA is considered to be a leading organization in the field of animal rights in the country after 22 years of work. Of work. Animal rights activism became possible in the 90s uh, when the USSR ceased to exist. Before the USA was established, veget vegetarianism was developing uh, 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 rapidly in the end of the 90s and the beginning of the 12th and 20th century. A great Russian writer Lev Tolstoy, I hope you know who is this man, uh, was one of the movement's founders. Uh, on that time, vegetarians was not diet, Di diet, and was uh, idea. Uh, but nowadays, it's uh, have other. Uh, unfortunately, after the revolution and until the uh, 30s, the ideas of vegetarianism were banned since those ideas were, were considered adverse by the state. The followers of vegetarianism were incarcerated. No, in prison. Uh, we had been working really hard to restore the history of vegetarianism before the revolution. We did a lot of handwriting in the libraries and archives of St. Petersburg, Moscow, and other cities. Science scanning of the books and journals was rest restricted. Uh, eventually, we discovered very thrilling facts. For instance, there were meetings 
before revolution, where not only Russian vegetarians were taking part, uh, but also fellows from other countries. What's like uh, um, this conference, it was before the revolution, <laughs> I think, uh, uh, in Russia. I don't know what in other foreign country it was, but in Russia it it was. Uh, the highlights of the meetings were not just food, but also vegan clothes production, along with vegan shoe repair glue. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, there were vegan cars in some towns around Russia. The goal of the project was to introduce the history of animal rights activism in Russia to its citizens. Why was it so important to show that idea of veganism had its roots in Russia rather than it's something foreign? Now I will explain. The promotion of vegetarianism was put on hold for more than 70 years. During this, that period, the society had developed an exploitative attitude towards animals, even though after the reform, the country was open to new ideas, uh, any non-conformity was <laughs> that it's no surprise that the ideas of animals having Christ seemed so extreme back then. With regards to all said above, the ideas that animals have rights were entertainment, entertainment carefully. Health professional opinion and research data had been involved to educate people about benefits of vegetarian, vegetarianism. In addition to that, the ideas has been promoted by means of familiar topics of companion towards compassion towards companion animals. Excuse me. Uh, Later, animal rights movement started to expand. First, animal rights protests started to occur. Such protests against institute were rather scare for people and thus were not very welcome. The society back then saw peony protests could be considered real heroes. Today, such animal rights protests are held nearly every week around the country. Uh, we have started to activity collaborate with media. Today, uh, this is our uh, anti for march uh, in St. Petersburg. Um, when many years ago, first acts, uh, include maybe 10 or 20 people. Uh, now it's uh, 100 and 100. Mm -hmm. uh, we have started to actually collaborate with media. Today there are thousands of articles and uh, reports available, which means that considerable amount of people are informed about different aspects of animal exploitation. We have also had over a hundred of media conferences. <laughs> we also work with uh, some Russian celebrities to spread the message of animal protection, including vegan lifestyle. A number of festivals take place. The first one was held in 90, uh, 2004 on Animal Protection Day. It was the first time ever when two TV channels uh, mentioned veganism. 
Today, vegan fests are very common in Russia. For instance, just in St. Petersburg alone, there were three festivals which uh, gathered thousands of people together. Not only vegan festivals are held in major cities, but they are also uh, in smaller towns around the country. In 2014, in the city Magnitagor, which are located on the border with Europa and Asia, the Miss Vegan contest took place. I don't know, maybe another country has same. No? Uh-huh. We are the first in the world. Uh, and shortly after that, there was a had the Mr. Vegan <laughs> contest. <laughs> the important thing is that the competition had been supported by the city administration. It's very important. The major goal of the contest was the promotion of vegan lifestyle. One of the effective ways to spread the information among school students in Russia and boarding countries are drawing competition and essay writing, since you know that children are more empathic to animal suffering. The first contest under the title of Let Them Live took place in 2003 and was dedicated to four animals. The chairwoman of the jury was a famous actress, Brigitte Bardot. Uh, This is uh, every year, this is uh, hundreds school and thousands of children take part. Uh, ever since that context has become annual, the topic of sentence competition was vegetarianism. Even the Union of Writers of Russia participated uh, in granting awards to the Constants. Later of there were competition dedicated to animals that are used in research, circles, and hunting. In addition to that, Vita has been arranging the competition on the title of Stalin against Fur during the last eight years, which has united school students as well as undergraduate students Uh, the sexual story of a small school, of school in small town Kachkanar, uh, that has uh, been participating in most our contests, also worth mentioning. The teacher, this nice woman, uh, of the school who was in initiative initiator of participants told us that her students were so absorbed with the problem of animal exploitation that many of them uh, did further research on Vita website and other sources with regards to the topic. As a result of this research, half of Towns, youth came to veganism. She told so <laughs> to us. In general, working with children and youth is one of the top priorities for us. Some time ago, Tatiana Pavlova wrote textbooks on bio bioethics for schools and universities. One of the schools in Moscow have had bioethics class for the whole year. Some of the lectures are also read in uni at universities. We are very pleased that more and more students choose the topics related to animal pro protection for their research papers. And most of them seek the information support in our organization. Today, the bioethics lessons are held at some schools in St. Petersburg, even though they are not officially included in our uh, program. We are 
currently working on the learning materials to include bioethics in the extra secular education program. <laughs> Previously, we had been promoting the bioethics subject at various conferences and forums dedicated to environmental education. The high point of this was the bioethics roundtable discussion for school teachers in 2015, which was supported by the Education Council of St. Petersburg. I think it's also important when uh, part of government support our movement. Another big issue uh, we are currently working in the, is a childhood animal cruelty in Russia. What children made in Russia with animals, cats, dogs, uh, birds, it's awful. Uh, I, I will not show you a picture or video, but it's really, really. Uh, and children often commit horrible acts of cruelty towards animals, but the government and child protection services do not in, intervene. While attempting to solve this ever increasing problem, uh, we engage psychologists, teachers, and lawyers. In addition to that, we research matters relating to animal cruelty and protection to, in certain nations with well-formed laws. So we would be very interested to learn how this problem is addressed in the European countries. We would very much appreciate it if you could share share the following information with us. No, better you read that I speak. Uh, decision of this problem uh, help to move bioethics in school. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways to inform people is animal protection advertisement, which includes internet commercial. What really important is the fact that some of the commercial, some of the advertising uh, was supported local authority, okay. authorities. Mm -hmm. The first advertisement took place in late 90s. It was placed in Moscow's underground. It stated, uh, started a call to stop animal explosion. Basically, it was a call to veganism. The biggest campaign took place in 2013, 2014 in Moscow, when thousands of banners uh, of various for formats against real food with well-known people on them were placed on the street of the city and in underground. And it was all supported by the government of Moscow. Here's the la latest, latest, and I, <laughs> Circus with animals advertisement on the trucks. Currently in St. Petersburg, there's ongoing preparation for the big vegan diet ad. From the first years of Vita ex existence, the organization is co cooperating with Interniche. Uh, you know this organization. International Network for Human Education. Uh, now it's also cooperating with Doctors Against Animal Experiments Germany. Thanks to this cooperation, animal experiment was replaced with an alternative methodology in 12 Russian high education institutes. Uh, we have launched a special prize, Bronze Frog, designed by, by the famous Russian sculptor Alexander Tsigal. 
Today, there are ongoing negotiations on the subject with several, several more universities. Also, there is work going uh, in regards of updating cruelty-free, non-cruelty-free list of cosmetics. Uh, one of the most important parts in informing the uh, audience for us is making our own films, as well as translating and dubbing foreign films. The first film made by us is called Hamburger As It Is, As It Is. It's the first Russian language film ever that speaks about the suffering of animal used in agriculture. The film was made with a support in world farming. The film was awarded three times in the different movie festivals. One of the festivals was in Moscow Film Festival, uh, where Hamburger, as it is, was awarded with a Grand Prix, which helped to promote the topic of vegetarians among the filmmakers as well as other people. After that, we were films dedicated to the hunting, experimentation, animals, uh, bullfighting, and the killings of baby seals, the half seals pups. Кадры нам предоставила организация, которая помогала. Uh, from Russia, um, what is the organization? Ah, yeah. Uh, еще раз тогда ответь. Кадры были предоставлены. Которые совместно с которой мы производили этот фильм. Compassion and World Farming. A film about animal exploitation entertainment industry called Circles, The Illusion of Love is now used in some school as a tutorial on the issue. Uh, Vita also published books. The latest was a book series by a medical historian Hans Rusch. Do you know Hans Rusch? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Dedicated to debunk the myth of animal test necessity. End of hub seal pups, slater in uh, 2009, may be considered one of our greatest wins. Uh, the closing step of this campaign was a flight to seal's habitats by Vita with public figures and leading Russian TV channels on board. For me personally, the TV coverage I saw that days was a reason to take a third of an issue of killing animals for fur. It was long before my transition to vegan lifestyle and animal rights advocate. Advocacy. Advocacy. Excuse me. Also, the Venus campaign of year 2001 for, for bidding, bullfighting in Moscow and Yaroslav, which served as a dramatic turnaround of an attitude towards Corrida in other countries, uh, strengthened the anti-bullfighting movement. There are also ongoing investigations on the effects of cruelty in the various shepherds of animal exploitation. One of the most scan scandalous was the investi investigation in St. Petersburg circus. Our activists became 
became their employer and which a candid camera typed what was happening there. The revealing of this footage might be considered the beginning of an end of entertainment industry that is used animals in Russia. Uh, some investigation in interfere excuse me with the interests of power pool okay once more because it's important some investigations interfered with the interest of powerful people that was the case with the orcs for moscow uh, oceanary locked in tanks and with a beaten leon cup in st petersburg slender lower suits field against us uh, we had unfortunately lost we faced tens of thousands euro fins fines information war against us became even more severe it was regular from our opponents before that too but when the revelation took place to the scale of the became bigger. Our website and emails were hacked. Media would have been posting articles and coverage standing Vita. The latest one was on TV where Vita and veganism uh, portrayed as nothing but monsters. Uh, but we don't give up and we think that it's a sign that entertainment industry abusing animals and the industry of exploitation as a whole is in agony and is close to its end. A campaign organized by us for the circus of no animals has united more than a hundred of cities in Russia and the 11 neighboring countries. In autumn, there is going to be the first unified campaign, Animal are not close. Closing. Right? Clothing. <laughs> in which more and more citizens are participating, not only those of Russia, but of the neighboring countries as well. This one also includes more than a hundred of cities. This campaign activates animal rights movement in the part of parts of Russia where veganism is only starting to evolve. Uh, starting with fur and circus, those teams are more understandable to people. We finished with the promotion of veganism. We also we also work with uh, citizen complaints and animals' cruelty, give legal advice, interact with legislative authorities. To con conclude, I would like to mention that VITA, for the period of its activity, was and is a member of seven international organizations and is cooperating with several others. I hope that in the future we will cooperate with organizations participating in this conference. And thank the organizers for making it possible. Thank you.